Good evening and a warm welcome to a cook tour with Rocket. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. What I want to do is get the face and pop the yolk right in the middle. Good evening and a warm welcome to a Cook's Tour with Rocket. And our next destination, we're heading to Scandinavia for Wild Nordic. My name is Charlie Grant Peterkin and I am here, like you, to learn from the master, Mr. Ryan Stafford. Gut Karel. Gut Karel, I think it said, Charlie. Gut oh. Karel. We'll get it. <laughs> we'll get it. Well, luckily we've got Johan here to Welcome. Help us. <laughs> we have the privilege of welcoming two guests this evening. Arthur from Chalkstream, who will join us in a little minute, uh, and Johan Svensson, who is always welcome on a Cook's Tour, but particularly this evening. We like to be as authentic as possible with our ingredients, seasonality, and this evening we have our very own Swede, not a root vegetable, but Johan, our Swedish mixologist from Drinks Fusion. Good Karel. Good Karel. <laughs> I've got to say, Ryan, you, 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 you nailed it. Charlie, you need a little bit, little bit Ooh, of practice. That's so good. It's great to have you here, Johan. Thank you. Likewise. Great um, to be here. And if you don't mind, we're going to pick your brains a little bit about um, your home country. Right. Um, go on, tell us a little bit about Scandinavia and the Nordics. Well, there, there's, there's a lot to say, but uh, I think what's really striking to me is uh, uh, really the, the, the vastness of the, the region and the seasonalities, you know, as a young boy growing up having fantastic winter seasons, you know, with all the sports and everything just outside your front door mm. and then seeing, you know, the, everything come to life through uh, the snow, the, you know, the blossoms shooting through the, the, the snow in the spring and everything waking up and then, you know, the summers with the endless light and uh, um, then, you know, autumn, everything changes colour and I mean, it's, it's just amazing and all the fantastic Beautiful. botanicals totally magical. and yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's amazing. And, you know, also how the, the landscape is so different from the sort of uh, beautiful meadows of the, the southern part where sort of uh, the south part of Sweden, Skåne area and Bleaking in towards uh, uh, Denmark and then you're going up and you have like the fjords of Norway and the high coast yeah. and the big mountain land of, of northern uh, uh, Sweden and the Arctic and Finland with the Great Lakes. And I mean, yeah. Johan, thank you so much. We will see you um, a little bit later for a drink. Thank you, Johan. Break. We're going to make the most wonderful Nordic Negroni. So we'll see you shortly. Thank you. Perfect. Right, okay, so um, just before we get cooking, um, a quick reminder of the rules. Um, you can cook along now or later. Um, and as ever, warm welcome to those who are cooking on Friday. Um, you can use the pause, uh, pause if you need to, okay? Just hit the space bar um, at any moment. Um, and there's the live chat function, so use that for any questions you might have, um, and Michael will get back to you on that. And um, please use our social handles to post photographs of your fabulous creations and uh, use the hashtag cookwithrocket. Um, Ryan, okay, enough chat. Let's get cooking. What's on the menu this evening? So we have got Charlie. It's, it's a bit like Outback, you know, I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone again because I'm obsessed since the, the, the Noma kind of explosion, Rene Redzepi, mm. uh, 2000 and kind of like 10, 2013, Simon Rogan in London, you know, some big name chefs really endorsing what, uh, you know, the amazing Johan just said about his childhood and Scandinavian Nordic cuisine. Great, well, let's start with the um, venison yeah. meatballs. Let's um, do that. So we need, um, we need from here. We need the venison, would yep. be a good That'd start. Help. We need the smoked uh, mashed potatoes. Yep. We need the venison jus, and we'll have a little chat as we're going along rolling these meatballs. What else do we need? We need a little spice mix, which would be here. 
So first off, we need some gloves and a bowl, Charlie. So ah, well, I, I, I sort of smart. thought you'd be um, asking for gloves, go. so I came prepared. On, on the ball all the time. On the ball, Mr. Charlie. So basically, first things first, guys. We're going to need a couple of pans today. So um, true Scandi Noma style into a pan of water now. Turn it on, it's nice and sealed in there. We just want to heat that through. That is a, a, a Rocket or Cooks Tour special that we have done before the show. One, one destination we will learn how to make Brian's um, mashed potato, but he, he doesn't think we're ready for it yet. <laughs> I'm sure we've got, we've got some, we've got some uh, um, amazing plates, as, as we said in the last show, um, mid-January. So yeah, um, I think you guys, you're probably a cook up a couple of destinations away from that. So, venison. Let's get cracking with that. We're going to make with this dish venison meatballs, as we've called it. Um, we've got some wild wild venison. Mm. Um, we have got the herb mix, which is traditional. We've got the lingonberry, which is traditional Scandinavian berry as well. Perfect. Bowl, gloves on, the venison. Look at that. Look at the colour of it. It's, it's dark. It's very dark, yeah. It is, it is. And um, what I've done in here, because venison's quite lean. And it's it, very lean. I was going to say, it doesn't seem to be much, um, much fat or much marbling. No. So what I've asked our incredible producers and um, partners at um, HD Walter to just incorporate a little bit of aged beef fat in there as well. Just to add, not flavour, but just sort of cooking process. Um, if it's just protein, it'd be like a, a chicken breast with no amazing skin on top. So yeah. just to keep it nice and moist. I'm not a big fan of popping eggs, breadcrumbs, all that uh, jazz in there. I really want to pioneer the ingredients and just pop a little bit of natural so what sort of percentage of fat to meat would you sort there's of about, There's about 10% in there. There's, okay, uh, there's, not there's, there's, there's not a lot. I really just want it not to tighten up too much. Uh, really, really fine mint. So if you go to your butcher, you're, you're going to ask for some venison haunch or some, some venison shoulder or leg and ask them to uh, mince it quite fine. Uh, okay. Just because it's going to be nice and smooth, nice and delicate on, on the palate as well. And that's what we're looking for. So meatballs go in there. The mash is on. We've got a lingonberry jam there, which leaves the spice mix. Have a little after that. Mm. Absolutely incredible, and the iconic flavours for me. Gosh. It changes a little bit, you know, we were in Mar uh, Marrakesh a couple of weeks ago, and um, you know, you can have accents, and this is my version, all spice and nutmeg, I, I was going to say nutmeg, that's what I'm really sensing. It's pivotal, you're getting that woody kind of wild savouriness, there's a bit of white pepper, a little black, yeah. bit of black pepper in there as well, bosh, straight in, straight in, a little bit of salt in there and pepper, so don't worry about seasoning, that's all in there. Um, so we'll pop that over there, and Charlie. I'm itching to get my hands. Get dirty. your hands in there. Get it all mixed up, and um, I can talk about the, the rest of the dish. Well, just tell us a little bit about um, once we're getting this all mixed about venison. You know, the, when's it in season for a start? Um, well, the season starts game season in the UK and most of Europe starts, but with with our laws that allow because game season is predominantly wild. We need to make sure when we harvest these um, incredible ingredients, products, uh, that they've had time to, you know, re restock themselves. You know, they've calved throughout the spring and summer, regeneration, you know, um, lived and uh, grazed on the pastures uh, up in Scotland, down in Kent, uh, down in Cornwall, and this is Kentish. Okay. So Kentish, but even Richmond Park, believe it or not, those beautiful beasts mm. that you see in the field, they're, uh, you know, they're harvested each year to uh, keep, keep the park nice and trimmed and stuff. And there was a place, a National Trust Park near me, uh, where I grew up called Lion Park. And we used to, the local butcher always used to have Lion Park venison in there, which was beautiful, nice and local. Good, good, good. So the spice mix is in there. Just If you can just see some little clumps, let's give that a real good oh, okay. massage. We've, we've, Sorry, been, chef. we've been to Istanbul, we know all about Oh, okay, the, so I'm really getting street, physical. The street massages, yeah, we're really yeah, getting okay. that in, real kind of work Sorry, it with, that, with been, the index fingers. I was fingers. being far too dainty, you work the index fingers. Now, um, for the sauce, or the gravy as it's called, so any Scandinavians will say it's not a sauce, it's a gravy, and it is just that. We've got our mass, which is going to be, you know, the star of the show. It's like the rice to the curry, as I refer to quite a lot. Wow, it's Charlie, you're really, been quite really unpleasant getting involved. Sort of, um, squelching noise. Um, you know, we wanted to get through the process that you smell the raw ingredients. The sauce, really, mm. rather than giving you 20 little pots, is basically cream, white wine, and for me, Dijon mustard. Dijon mustard's not classical. Some people put a bit of horseradish in there, some people just do wine and a bay leaf. So we're going to uh, go some cream. We're going to go a little bit of um, cream and mustard and white wine, which is all in one pouch, which I'm just popping in there now. Okay. Just going to pop that in. We're going to poach the meatballs. We're not going to fry them. We're not going to grill them. We're going to poach them in the sauce. Ah, cool. Yeah, we're just going to pop them in there, and that's going to allow them not... If you go to... With venison, because it's so lean, if you go really brash and aggressive, like I do like to cook, I'm quite bold as a cook, mm. as we've seen from the studio being half burnt down <laughs> time to time. Um, you know, with venison, it's quite lean. You want to be quite gentle, and just poaching it in the sauce allows the proteins not to over... Um, you know, 
So uh, you don't need to get any colour on it first? No, 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 it's all in the sauce. And then that leads me on as well, why we're not getting colour, because, I'll tell you what, I'll just show you this next bit, Charlie. Just yeah. want to take a pinch. So, you don't really need to do it, but just pat it down a little bit and then into, into between the palms, heat of the hand, yeah. and just some little meatballs like that. And I will get you a, a lovely little bowl here. Okay. So quite small. Yep, quite small. And it's quite traditional as well to have 10, 12, 14. For me, how I was taught as well. Yeah. I've been to Ikea some 20 times now, <laughs> and uh, I know what I'm doing, okay? I was going to so say. Don't, don't mess, pretty these, much. These, these look remarkably similar in size. <laughs> yeah. So basically, we've got our lovely cream in there. Now, look at the jiggle on that, Charlie. Yeah. There's something about it. I jiggle, get so excited by sort of stocks. The jelly, the jelly jiggle. Now, yeah. this is straight in the back pocket. See you later. You've got the gold. You've robbed the bank. This is a rocket masterpiece right here. This is venison bones, so we've got the Ooh. ribs in there that have been roasted, we've got rosemary in there, we've got um, some lingonberries, we've got some red merlot aged vinegar in there, some veal stock as well just to collaborate, some chicken stock, took it down, 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 we didn't sleep for three weeks while we're making it, blah, 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 this is the number. That's the business. That's the business, 1-800, don't oh. go to Ikea. This is it right here. So, I love that. no more IKEA chat because we're not going back. Straight. I have spent most of January um, weekends making bone broths. I just find it so satisfying. Is that right? Yeah, cooking bone. a roast chicken and then you know spending the rest of the weekend sort of making stocks and all sorts. So while you're while you're hitting Sorry, those uh, meatballs, they're absolutely delicious. So we're going to go a ladle, which is probably about 100 grams of water in there. So I'm going to steal that out of my my pan, and there we go. The magic has happened. That is it. That's as simple as it is. So let's put that on so you can see. Nice and clear how simple it is. The mash is on. The sauce is there. Now we're just going to bring it up to a very, very slow uh, simmer. We're going to pop the meatballs in. They're going to simmer. And once they're ready, which I'll, I'll let you know, we'll just turn them off and just give them a little kick at the end when okay. they're ready to plate. That simple. Let's just recap. The mash is on. Yep. The sauce is on. You're doing a fantastic job. I'm there. almost there. We're going to pop those in. So we're going to pop those in and poach as soon as I'm onto the probably This is the last one. And then we're going to get to invite our lovely Arthur from Chalkstream. That's right. And uh, yeah. I'm going to get rid of Charlie, hopefully, for 10 minutes. For the first time ever. Yeah. Uh, it's a bit of a breakthrough. I'm only joking, Charlie. Lovely, <laughs> really. These are, these are going to go straight in the pan, guys. So don't worry that the sauce hasn't quite come together. Let's give it a little swoosh. And I almost forgot. We've got some beautiful, beautiful um, herbs here. We're going to start with some bay leaves. So the bay leaves, two bay leaves out of your little um, bouquet, if I can say, mm -hmm. um, of the herbs and wildflowers that we've got. Pop those in. Venison meatballs go in. We just pop them in the sauce and we're just going to poach them and look after them. We want that sauce to come up slowly. It's um, a, a double cream, which we always use for cooking because it's, it doesn't have a tendency to mm. split. And also uh, white, things like white wine, lemon juice, they all split and curdle cheese, mm -hmm. which is great if you're making cheese. But if you're, uh, if you're not, then um, yeah, you, you want it um, to come together. And double cream's got the fat content to emulsify and make a great sauce. Yes. Great, okay, well, are we there with the, the, bank. the meatballs for now? Yes. Brilliant. Well then, it gives, um, it gives us great pleasure to um, welcome um, a fabulous supplier. We, we, we talk a lot about um, our little black book and uh, we champion fabulous suppliers, um, the length and breadth of the country. Um, and today, we're really fortunate to have Arthur from Chalkstream. Um, and he is joining us to, um, um, well, to do some cooking with Ryan and to tell us a bit more about their fabulous operation down in Hampshire. So, um, welcome, Arthur. Come Arthur, on in. Arthur, Charlie. Hi. Man. Hi. Hi, Ryan. How are you? Absolute pleasure. Good. Absolute pleasure to have you. And thank you so, so much for um, coming on. Yeah, with your lovely products. Well, yeah. thanks, thanks for having me. And, Very um, good to see you. Well, look, um, tell us a bit about Chalkstream and what it is that you guys are doing in Hampshire. Okay, so we, we set up in 2016 on a trout revival to get um, this quintessential fish back onto menus again. Um, so it had been, you know, very much forgotten, forgotten about. Salmon had really come in, yeah. and you know, trout taking the sidelines. So we we started off, um, and we collaborated with these farms down in Hampshire, um, and started to grow them much larger, which we'll, we'll show you hopefully. And. Um, and the whole thing was to get it to chefs and to get it out there. Chefs like Ryan, um, people like Otto Lenghi, you know, they were really early, early adopters of it. Um, and we just showed people what a fantastic product it was. And we really believe, you know, down in Hampshire on the chalk streams, which are the most famous uh, sort of rivers we have in the UK, in fact, the mm. world, uh, you know, there's only 210 chalk streams. Wow. And 
85% of those, uh, the world's chalk streams are found in southern England. Um, and the test and the itchin where we farm uh, are trout. They're, they're the king and queen. Um, and that's the birthplace of where um, trout fishing, fly fishing was um, actually born uh, back yeah. in sort of 1890s. Oh, how so incredible. They've got a huge amount of history, beautiful crystal clear water, gin clear water. Yeah, I wanted it. you to say that because you were saying in rehearsals. Gin clear. Gin it's clear gin clear. clear. It is gin clear. Oh, it's, it's, like, it's like this. It is actually like that. It's, it's fantastic. Yeah. How do you know that's gin? <laughs> you can smell it. <laughs> well, look, I know, I know you didn't come empty handed, so um, I'm just going to so oh. try and look at this. Not split my trousers. Here we go. Um, I bring right. in some merchandise. So, this is what we. This wow. is what we call one of our. Look at that. One of our gleamers. This is a gleamer, so we'll have to. So all of our fish are harvested to order, so they're all in rigour. So as you can see, it's, it's, it's what you call stiff alive. Um, alive. And they're just in, they're absolute machines, these guys, because they, they, um, they're swimming against about two tonnes of water per second that's coming into the farm. So it's, it's like they're on a treadmill their whole life. <laughs> they're, just, they're just constantly soldiering away, waiting to end up at some, some sure. great kitchen like this. Um, let me take that. Um, <laughs> Let, let, let me give you a cloth. Oh, look at that. That's genius. Right. You know what? Just, be, just before you do dry your hands, I've got a thing about it's good luck for a chef to kiss the fish. Can, I, can, we, can we have a little go? Is that mouth closed? It, it, it will when it sees you, Ron. Okay, <laughs> what about, about a little cheek kiss? A little, cheek, a little cheeky kiss, yeah. <laughs> oh. Tasty. I'll I tell you about that chalk. That is coming straight through, but you can see the freshness as well, can't you? That's a bit of a chef thing. I always do it. Fantastic products. Fantastic knowledge to hear about it. Let's get cooking a dish with it. Okay, right. Amazing. Oh, oh, the, the, <laughs> the freshness. I don't know if you you were joining guys from Sheila back in Outback, but Sheila, Sheila Sheila's got friends, and I, I like I like what I see and <laughs> taste. So, Arthur. Um, this product just keeps delivering. As you can see, this fat. Tell me a little bit about this fat because as a chef, I look for fat in a salmon and trout for one reason. I generally cook it in the pan with no oil. Yeah, okay. You've so you've heard about that. So what, what, what brings this? Just while I'm opening this up. So that's on the belly. So that's obviously the belly section there and then you've got the shoulder, yeah. shoulder section there. So shoulder. obviously you, you end up with, with fat in the belly. That's where it naturally goes uh, within, within the fish. Mm -hmm. um, but actually our, compared to your um, salmon and sea rear trout, our trout have fed a, fed a diet which is much higher in protein compared to oil. Um, and so you actually end up, it, the product is actually leaner um, throughout the flesh, but you always, all these um, farm fish, salmon, sea trout, will have that fat down on the on, on the belly. It's and it will render down, as you say, in the in the pan. So this, this first dish that we're going to do, I'm going to get a few ingredients um, that I want to talk about real quick. This is chalk stream trout, ceviche with horseradish. Charlie, yes. would you be so kind just to pass that big monster looking white carrot of a horseradish? This fella? Yes. With pleasure. Beast. Have a little whiff of that. Familiar with a horseradish? Use yeah. it a lot? Uh, not, not, not one this size, <laughs> yeah. actually. It's an absolute monster. <laughs> everyone, everyone at home checking the Coleman's like, am I having ripped off? No, that's what it looks like. Um, and we're going to pair this up with your beautiful ingredients. Great pairing. So, um, I'll talk about the ingredients in a minute. Would you like to, with this, with this uh, knife, just whack the skin off for me, cut this into three slices, and do the same with that, and then dice it. Okay. Is that good? Sounds yeah, yeah. This good, is this is this is quite. Right. Arthur, is, Arthur, the, this is like Master Chef skill section. It is. So I'm, I, <laughs> Hang on you can be Greg. I'll be Monica. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. What What, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm <really> joking. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to take the skin off in a very unprofessional way. That's all right. That's all right. As long as it comes off, bang. Oh, there what? We go. Let me get oh, you a look. Oh, a true professional. Me, I know. I wasn't actually told that I was going to be doing you know this sort of stuff. He, he was just winding. Here we go. Here we go. There we go. So. We'll pop, pop that in there, uh, and meanwhile, I'll get um, a, a saute pan on, because really, really interest, interesting dish, this, guys. Now, don't, don't start saying, oh, no, but we're going to eat this dish, because a beautiful product like this, anyone that likes a bit of sushi, we're going to eat this dish half cooked, half raw, yeah. and that is testament to Nordic cooking. Um, you know, on a plate with some pickles, with some fat, uh, not just from the fish uh, that gives that beautiful fat, but like we're going to have some sour cream, some blueberries, some horseradish, and a little bit of dill. Pr pr plain true kind of like a uh, testament to the classic horseradish and salmon kind of yeah. number. It works with a twist with the pickled blueberries. That's perfect. You've done this before, Arthur. Yeah, I've done this before. You, you, you removed the oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, you do. Uh, yeah, you do. It's a busman's honeymoon, isn't it? <laughs> 
So Come basically, the cook's tour, get put to work. Now this this dish, guys, this is one of those dishes that um, will sit there. It will sit there very, very uh, lovely as well. And we're going to plate it. We're, all this plating today is going to be very, very loose, so rustic that it's actually going to look beautiful and quite Michelin mm. level. Is that, and, um, is that good? It's bigger, smaller? Uh, just a little bit smaller. Just, just, like just through that again. That's perfect. Yeah, that would be absolutely dreamy. Cool. Well done. So, um, Arthur, how was um, 2020 for you? You're probably quite see pleased you've seen the back of it. Um, you know, it was, yeah, uh, yeah, well, here we are again, but no, <laughs> it, it, um, it, was, it was a really tough year. Um, and um, our business was all to chefs, to food service like, your, like yourselves. Yeah. And, you know, all of a sudden on the 16th of March, things started to go quite wrong. Um, and, we, and we saw about 90% 90, 90 of our business disappear. Gosh. And so we converted into this, uh, into the sort of home retail and, and getting it at straight out to, um, to people all over the uh, all over the country, um, and we had some. We had the biggest breakthrough was um, some fantastic help from Jamie Oliver, who was um, he he came in um, and he, he offered to showcase our products um, uh, on 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 Instagram and and tell people about it and. Yeah. Trout is hugely misunderstood because people think, oh, it's small, it's bony, it's muddy. And what we've done with the food service was really, you know, show chefs that when it's reared in, in a super clean environment like ours, down the chalk streams with that gin clear water, it's incredibly clean tasting, it's not muddy. And with these large sides, you know, you don't have any We're pin bones. that side, actually. Okay. I know. Sorry. I was have I done it wrong? No, no. Well, you meant to, Chef, you meant to uh, pan fry that. We're, we're going to pan fry this. Uh, that we're going to dress. So I'm just going to go ahead. Uh, just, you carry on talking. Just while we've got that uh, trout, we're actually going to half cook it. So I've got a pan on here that's very hot, which is not quite there at the minute. Sorry to very yeah, much. No, that's right. You. Um, and it was fantastic because what, you know, what um, Jamie did so well was um, show people that actually Try trap. You're not going to die, um, yeah. and it's and 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 it's got a great British provenance where we are. It's got a great story behind it, um, and support your local suppliers like he did with the cheeses, and he did it with a couple of others uh, yeah. of his suppliers, and that was brilliant. So that really kickstarted our our um, our home delivery. So, um, and 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 slowly, slowly, we really started to get some good traction with it, and um, we had a manic Christmas. Uh, everybody in the office is 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 just about recovered from that, um, and now we're straight back into another lockdown. So it's sort of a, you know, <laughs> we eat, know sleep, repeat. <laughs> yeah, we do know the feeling, don't we? So it was it was a nice busy busy end in in, in the best way that it, possibly it was. Yeah, I mean it's it's we, you know, there has been a good good to come out of it in terms of we've we've built a you know this good online business getting it to chefs try that Arthur. it's a trout eyeball oh lovely <laughs> so, um, it's a beautiful blueberry that's been pickling in a oh. little bit of blueberry jam a little bit of merlot vinegar a sliver of garlic a little bit of sugar a little bit of lemon juice in there as well and johan the amazing johan he always comes on his little pickles going chef try this pickled in pineapple juice fermented for this mm. time so trying to step up to the johan level and that deliver a bit of Nordic love. And nice and tart, I like that. It's nice and tart, fatty fish, fiery horseradish, creamy sour cream. What have we left out? I don't think anything. Nothing. So Char what's, what's next up? So Charlie, you're feeling a little bit left out over there. <laughs> Bosh, trout eyeball for you. Um, so, a little dip in the water. Now, this pan is scorching hot. Just before we pop that in there, you should have a few things now, guys. A lot of information on chalk stream trout. So uh, three, three or four slices of um, trout, some diced trout and a plate ready with some pickled blueberries that we're just gonna dance around the plate real, real beautifully. I don't know where I get it from. Let's make it up as I go along, honestly. It's, it's something that um, I've, I've researched a book, Noma, plenty of times. Been to um, Simon Rogan's restaurant, who's a you know a little bit similar in essence in terms of the plating. Um, you know, really just put it on a plate, let the ingredients do a lot of speaking. Mm. That's what this dish is all about. So if you would be very kind with a clean spoon there, just to pop um, some of this in there with some of this, I keep saying some of this. All of it or some, some of this? Beautiful diet trout, all of it. All of it. With a little bit of pickling liquor and this is what's going to be the ceviche moment. Ceviche is to cook in acid. And I use the word ceviche just to keep things simple. It is a Peruvian, Mexican way, Colombian way of, you know, we're using like lime juice traditionally. But we can stretch it out. That's what we do. It's not Orionism. You can use vinegar. How much? Uh, probably half of that. And we just want to kind of like cook the fish. We don't need to just light, lightly tighten the protein up for a texture. 
Perfect, just give it a little mix around, nice and gently, not to cream the fish, but just to kind of fold it in the acid. We're just going to leave that there for a couple of minutes, and it will carry on ceviche on the plate. Meanwhile, have you seen, could you have that sour cream please, Charlie? Yes sir. Yeah, mm -hmm. perfect. And some of the sour cream over here. Now this is going to be uh, a very, very, not unusual looking dish, but it's going to be very, very simple. So, just nice big dollop over there. I'm just going to work it across the plate. Really nice and simple. Nice Great. and this is nice, very good. Nice and fatty. I'm intrigued with this all coming. Guys, together. get the spoon out. Get the, the maybe like COVID times the elbow. <laughs> get going in there. However you feel. <laughs> if you do happen to have a giant white carrot that smells of horseradish, it's going to work perfectly. So you just get involved. Um, I will not judge. <laughs> I'm really getting involved with this. I'm really you are. <laughs> I think your pan. Oh, really really I mean, if we talk about blue smoke, I think it's going yeah. to be sort of um, a purple haze. But do you know what? As we've talked in there, I'm going to change my mind a little bit and just again, constantly as a chef, looking around, I'm going to use a tiny little bit of olive oil okay. just to dance around the fish, just because the fat's great, but as you look in, it goes a little bit leaner. Uh, so I just want to make sure it definitely doesn't stick and give me any problems. Because that would be horrendous, wouldn't it? Professional chef last, last going down yeah. like a, a ton of bricks. In front of the incredible chalk stream. Yeah, there we go. So we're going to do it justice. So we're literally, guys, going to keep that fish together as if it was one again. And we're just going to wipe it around in the oil. Sizzle, sizzle, bang, bang. I hope uh, all, of the, um, all of the fire alarms are off because I didn't warn anyone about that. But that's all we want to do. A nice, nice sear. <laughs> it was meant to happen. It was meant to happen. It was actually meant to happen, but we'll just take that off the heat and not melt anything else while we're at it. So what, should we pop it there? Off the Smells heat. That's good though. There you go. Finally decided, we just want to sear half of that fish and this is going to be the last part of the plate. So absolutely beautiful. They love it, don't they? I can see everyone in the studio like, was that meant to happen? Was it meant to happen? It was. Of course it was. Always. So next, ne right. next part of the dish Never is going really to be amazing. <laughs> so we're finished with the pickle as well. You could keep that, put it in a salad dressing if you want. Yeah. Then that's what we're looking for. Going to put that there. Smoke's calmed down a little bit. Raw, but cooked also. Put, put right down, so we'll get a good shot on the overhand. There we go. Good shot on the overhead. Yeah. Let's plate this. Absolutely beautiful. Do really, you get, really you, hot pan, a little bit really, of oil, and not very long. And don't be afraid if it smokes. No, don't be afraid if it, if it slightly breaks as well when it comes out of the pan, like I feel this is going to. Did they tell you I was professional? Yeah, they did. They, they, they mentioned it. So as well, just ease it up. If it catches as well, it's fine. We're just trying to char, manipulate the fat a little bit. Um, and we just want to kind of like bring it out onto the plate. Oh, we just want a nice little seared piece there. And I, I just love that. I love the way it sits. Um, I'll pop that there just to cool down a little bit. And just to reference guys, your meatballs, just to bring that over while we're doing this dish. Poached, sauce is getting nice and thick. I'm gonna leave that on for about another five or 10 minutes just to reduce a little bit. But as you can see, look at the meatballs, nice, nice and clear. Mm. All that spice coming out there, I just wanna reduce good. the sauce a little bit. Turn the mashed potato down at the same time. And Arthur, we're almost there with your lovely, lovely dish. It's so it's more amazing. of the sour cream. Where did I put Oh, that? I think I've did I got it. Over here. Sorry. So the sour cream works perfectly. It's a clash against the acid. There's, there's a lot of enzymes in sour cream as well. Works absolutely beautiful. We're just going to kind of like smear some of this over the top just to make sure we get plenty of that. You won't be, like, you won't be able to taste the fish, but you will. <laughs> you wait. It's absolutely delicious. You can have that back, Charlie. Yep. And then another spoon, we're just going to pop some of this on top and lashings. This will all come together. Looks, um, it's kind of looking at a building that's half kind of finish. Mm. And <laughs> half finished and saying, do you think it's going to be nice? Just wait a second. And then some fresh dill. We've got this dill oil, we're going to use this on a few things, on a few dishes. It's just going to be absolutely electric, the way it kind of brings the dish together. Oh, that's good. And then some fresh dill. What's smoking? Are you cooking? <laughs> it's going a bit mad, isn't it, in here? So you've got some dill in your little bouquet. I just want to dance uh, a few of these kind of like little beautiful pieces of dill over the top here. That looks so yeah, cool. Great pair. And, and again, yeah, and it's, it's really, really classic. We're not finished yet. We've got a beautiful horseradish. You've got 
pickle in there. You've got, um, you've got the textures from the two different types of trout. The heat will carry that through. That fish underneath is going to flake almost, but, but still keep all the moisture because we haven't cooked it through. Mm. It's going to be really delicious. And you get the raw kind of pickled trout. Freshness of the, the, the foliage, the dill. A little bit of fresh horseradish. Mm. I like mine quite spicy, so I'm going to keep that there. Johan's probably like, what has he done here? But I promise it's going to be delicious. You feeling it, Johan? <laughs> you see through the smoke? There you go. Dish number one. Done. There you go. Take your big carrot. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're that. coming in for it. You're like, he's not taking my carrot. <laughs> and that, that can go and sit down there. Yep. Mm. Oh, Arthur, deal. thank you so much. Well, guys, thanks for having me on. Yeah, we'll Rude. see you a bit later. Thank you, See Arthur. You later thank Catch you, Arthur. Later. Well, it is smoky in here, Mr. Charlie. Oh, yeah, sure is. You've been having fun, hey? Always. Well, that was fabulous. So interesting to hear everything that Arthur has to say about trout and chalk, uh, chalk stream. Um, and it's just so important, isn't it, particularly now, to be, um, you know, really working hard to um, support and source and find and try yeah, and work with yeah. British um, suppliers. There's yeah, so yeah. many brilliant suppliers out there doing great things. So I'm going to have a little clean down of this board. Yes, clean down, we because we're going to be moving on um, cheese, to... Cheesecake, Bill. Yeah, this Dime Bar cheesecake. Oh. Do we have Dime Bars? We do. So for this next dish, the reason we're going to start this now, we're actually just going to start the base and we're going to pop it in the refrigerator and we're, we're, we're going to come back to that, if that's cool. Dime bars, look at them. So we've got some beautiful wildflowers, some quail eggs and some, <laughs> some dime bars. It, it, it looks pretty perfect, doesn't it? So you should have some cultured butter. Uh, I think we have it yep. right there, which would be fantastic. We just want to pop. Uh, your cultured butter in a small saucepan, we're just going to melt it. If you've made a cheesecake, smashing the digestives up, you know not we're, what we're going to do. We have done it with a little bit of a twist. So we've got some uh, oat biscuit. We've got some oat biscuit, some uh, feuatine. I never say it quite right. It's like a beautiful kind of brittle, uh, sweet brown sugar pastry. Um, and we just want to kind of melt that butter with that as well. So it kind of toasts, mm. toasts the oats up. And as you can see, the butter goes in there. It's a cultured butter from a state dairy. Really, really cool, slightly sour. It's going to work well with the cheesecake finish and the sweetness of the dime. So uh, we're just going to melt that on there for a minute. I'm not used to this one at the back. We don't cook on that one that often, do we? I mean, that, poof, not like, really. that came up scary. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to melt that butter. And while we're doing that, we're also, should we do the popcorn at the end or should we do it now? You tell me, you're the boss. I just feel like there's going to be a, a series here of me not knowing what I'm doing because <laughs> I've nearly set the place on fire, but let's do it. Let's do some popcorn. So guys, you will have some salty caramel popcorn. It's got a little bit of brown sugar in here, a little bit of butter, and we've also got um, a little bit of salt in there. It's really simple. We're just going to pop it. It's going to go everywhere. And we're going to pretend that that's what we want. Are you promising more smoke? 100%. I'm in. <laughs> yeah. Just going to show you my meatballs real quick because I'm really happy okay. with that. Yeah, I would be. I think that's inviting. Great. It's yeah. reduced and thickened. It's and reduced, it's glossy, the meatballs are perfectly round, and the smoothness of the mince and the grade of that fine mince. Perfectly that round about. meatballs. Perfectly thank you. round meatballs, Charlie. But Amazing. Really really so good. that's in there, and we're just going to set that aside now. Okay, so off the heat lid, and then just. Off the heat, bosh, and we'll just stick it over there. It'll stay nice and warm if you keep it in the pan. And as you can see, this is a sizzling away. Now this butter. Um, I like uh, a nice hard base on the uh, cheesecake, not something that you're trying to like smash through. Just want to melt that butter in there. And the fu uh, feuatine, I can never say it. The feuatine just adds the most incredible, incredible flavour. So just while waiting for that to melt. Could you play around and have all sorts of different biscuits and combinations of biscuits? Clear the cupboard out. Combination Clear the cupboard out, custard creams, yeah. a bit of bourbon in there, bosh, 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 just smash it all up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, talking about smashing it up, would you like to just go to town to do that. on those? You may have a few bars. We've mixed it up a little bit like the squashes two weeks ago. You know, you may have a couple of bars or a handful of uh, dimes. Uh, we, we, we've got it all at work, haven't we? Smash it up. I'm going to give you something. Are you proposing I do it? Oh. I reckon you just, <laughs> maybe a little gentleman, or maybe you want to go to town. A gentle oh, tickle or a bit of a... There, there we go. I'll leave it up to you. Okay. So a nice, nice hot pan on um, for the popcorn, guys, while Charlie's doing that. And also, we're going to make this amazing base. Just want to melt that butter, like I said, it doesn't take too long. The smell from this is incredible. Oh, come on, so, there we go. So it's absolutely electric, not to be confused with the meatballs right next to it. Mm. Toasted, caramelly. Oh, richness. Yeah, and uh, we're going to pop a little bit of dime ah. in here as well. You okay? You, no, no, nothing. Are you a bit of a DIY man? I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I tell I, you, I've had the man drawer open this January. And have you? 
I, I think I think the handyman's going to be coming around in February. I've probably done to uh, fix a few things. I've probably done fifty percent damage to the house and fifty percent <laughs> greatness. I mean, I, I said to I said I don't to, know why I bother. I said I'll put the pictures up, but there's actually an art between having a messed up on the wall, isn't there? They still have to be evenly spaced. Yeah. I just pretend they look okay. Yeah. You think it's oh, it'll just take five minutes. Uh, five hours later. Exactly. Yeah. I had to assemble a trampoline. Have you ever assembled a trampoline before? No. Oh my word. It took so long at the end. I, it was, I was actually doing it in the dark and I was just I was not going to be defeated. So I found a head torch. Is this Christmas? Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, the, so, art, the art of trying to be a good dad. Well, I know that's it. Isn't there it? you go. I'm just... So. Okay, I've given these a bit of a pounding. Um, how, I mean, how broken are we talking? Wow, I just had to smash them up. What have you done to those? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, let's, um, let's just open one of these. Well, I can always... Or even so, I, I think, look, and then we're just going to go into the base, a bit, okay. bit of damage going in there. So half, half of a bar, I, I did that one just because I wanted to eat some, so I don't <laughs> <run, run, run, laughs> actually need one. And then a bit, bit of damage. So just half a dime bar or? Yeah, there we go. In, in One small one. And as well, smell the chocolate straight away melting the caramel. Mm. Really delicious. God, what is it about dime bars? They are just, they are seriously good. Onto a tray. You've got a perfect amount there, it's all been weighed out. So you know, fold your paper over and just press it down. I wonder if you could do that and yeah. just imagine you're just trying to spread it out, not as thin as possible, but to, uh, you know, like a, a biscuit base. Yes, okay. Or three, something, something uh, that you think will break quite easy. I'd probably say it's you're looking warm. at a centimetre or so. Come on, Charlie, chef now. Have those well, I don't have those asbestos quick, hands like you. As my chef used to say to me, if you're quick enough, you won't burn yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Mediocre bullion. Like okay. So, nice hot pan here for the corn. We need a lid straight straight away to pop on there. So that, 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 that can good? go in the fridge. Yeah, if you pop okay. it over there and one of our lovely studio team will just pop that in the fridge, that would be absolutely incredible. On thank you, thank you. to the popcorn. Are you ready? I'm, I'm a bit with popcorn. This is one of those moments I think we, we, may, have, we may have problems, Charlie. I don't know. Let's, uh, let's, let's, let's get ourselves prepared a little bit. So okay, so it's, it's, it's just a, it's a, a saucepan, it's a high heat. Um, Have you done this before? I don't know, it's just a recipe for disaster. And in goes the corn. Just wait for it. Might get a bit smoky again. It is a bit... It's a bit it's... Sounds all right, guys? Sounds all right? Yeah. Take it off the heat and let it... So you've got a hot pan, put the corn in, take it off the heat and wait for it. We're waiting. Come on. We're Come waiting. On. Come on. We're waiting. It's always when you take the lid off. Give it a little shake around. There we go. Popcorn. There we go, we're popping corn. We are popping corn. And when you hear the popping, do you take it off the heat? And I love that as well. If you get as well the fat, almost gives it a little bit of charring. It's not meant to be like that. Yeah, it is. There we go. Okay, we've had enough now, haven't we? Well, let's, let's just pop that over there. Um, off the heat over there, that can do its thing. Then on to the next dish, Charlie. So we've got um, our dime bar, we've got the base, which is in the fridge now, we've got the popcorn, which is done, and then we've just got some beautiful leaves and our cheesecake base, and the rest, our other half of our dime bar, which you've still got, yep. which we're gonna touch on at the end. Brilliant. It's really, really simple. But before that, we're gonna have um, a cocktail moment, um, and we're gonna welcome Let's do that. to the stage, um, Johan Svensson, um, who is going to create a wonderful Nordic Negroni. So um, come on in, Johan. Hello, hello. Here he is. You know I love it. I can see it in your eyes. You know, you come on, I know, look at me and you I go, know. the chef's happy. I am indeed. Welcome well, it's back. Negroni time, so, you know, it's a, what's, what can be better than that? I think you also know it's my favourite drink. I know, my so I heard, so I heard. Drink. And now, you know, since you're um, using all this Scandinavian influence, we, we're going to do a little Scandi twist on a Negroni as well. Amazing. So, uh, we're going to do a um, Negro Nordic Negroni twist here. And the Negroni is um, a fantastic aperitif. Uh, it's an uh, Italian cocktail uh, using gin, uh, uh, vermouth, and a bit of bitterness from something like Campari or etc. 
and it's today. <laughs> you have to excuse that. It's going to carry on. We'll just go through it. Well, we'll we'll go we'll go Nature for of it. the beast. So yeah, and uh, it's traditionally drunk, you know, before dinner or during dinner or after dinner or whenever yeah. whenever you like. And today is really is one of the most popular drinks. So I've done a, a twist on it uh, using uh, a really really special berry uh, called an Arctic Bramble. We've done a classic Negroni recipe with a um, organic gin from Sweden and a vermouth, sweet vermouth, and a bitter. Uh, uh, from Italy called Contrato, uh, similar to Campari but not as sweet. So we've left these berries to sit in the Negroni for about two months to get the flavour profile. Okay. okay. And now we're going to enjoy it. Yeah. So what you do is, if you want to help me out here, Charlie, up to. and uh, fill this up with ice. And this is, uh, this is actually, what, what are they called? It's a so this Negroni's is a, a, um, stirring So yes, you stir the Negroni to dilute it to open up the flavours. And uh, um, you, if you haven't got a mixing glass, you can use something like a pint glass. No, I think that's perfect. That's yeah. absolutely brilliant. So you control it better when you have quite a lot of ice. And then you can, while I open this bottle, you can put some ice into these two tumbler glasses. Yep. Same thing there, I would fill them up. And then... Uh, take this string here so all this is 100% handmade including the waxing of the bottle coming out oh, of the, it's the a labor of love. <laughs> it is indeed uh, sometimes a bit less labor love too much. <laughs> exactly <laughs> depending yeah. um, and depending on how uh, strong you sort of like this to be you would uh, have between 70 to 100 mil I think you chaps would like a bit of a Oh, sturdy oh, drink. So uh, you you go ahead. I think we should just pour show, it in. Show us how you think it should be done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, no dry January is. Um, we, 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 no, let's let's exactly. Perfect. Let's let's go for it. And uh, <laughs> so, trick of the trade to control your dilution and know what's kind of going on is you put your fingers slightly above the the line of the uh, liquid. Mm -hmm and you start stirring. And when you stir, don't churn it, don't crush the ice, just gently, make sure it rotates. And you can do this with a pint glass? You can do it with a pint glass, or, or, or a jug, or anything yeah. like that. Uh, if you haven't got a, a fancy mix, but the, what, the, one of the key things about using a glass, it's, um, it isolates, rather than conducts the temperature, right? Whereas the, the so, so you will get a, sli a slightly slower uh, cooling element rather than if you use a metal tin. Yeah. So I prefer using the glass. So you know, it depends a little bit on what you like. So we're about 10 seconds or so, and you start feeling, if you just feel a little bit here, Ryan, you can feel the yeah. temperature really getting frosty yeah. around here. And if you compare it to up here, where it's warmer, then you know that you get yeah, the right definitely. temperature. You, you can feel. And then uh, I use a little special tool here called the julep strainer, but same thing there. You can just either put um, uh, anything you, like a regular sieve or anything like that. Yep. But the key thing is just to strain the um, liquid off the ice. And we pour it in over fresh ice. Same thing here, it's very important to keep um, the process is everything, isn't it? it is exactly. And keep dry eyes here. Not, not have um, uh, too watery eyes, because same thing there, then you over dilute it. And uh, staying true to the uh, slightly Scandinavian element here, I'm using reindeer moss. So a little bit of that, like that. That's very appropriate for the meatballs as well. Yes, well, there you go. And you know, to go with a little bit uh, bias here against my fellow Nordic neighbors. I'm doing uh, uh, blue and yellow. I'm sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I need to sort of stay a little bit um, on the right side here. <laughs> I mean, we can leave a little bit of white in there as well, keep Finland happy, I guess. <laughs> I've fallen in love with your little, not just your drink, but your little plate as well, your little coaster. Let's Can we please try? I think you should. <laughs> I think love you that. should. Love it, love it. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You, Johan. Thank you. Cheers. 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 Cheers to everybody. What do we say in, in Sweden? Skål. Of course. We Skål. Say Skål. Skål. Mmm. <laughs> Wowzers. It's, it's pure alcohol, right? <laughs> <laughs> We need to get on with the show because if I have any more of this, then there'll be no show left. That is so that is good. Delicious. That is so I'll, I'll, I'll leave you in the reception it. smoking a cigar with. <laughs> Thank you, Johan. As ever, amazing to have you, you on the show. Absolute Thank dream. You. Thank you, Johan. Very, very good. Gosh. Okay. So.
Wow, that's pretty cool. Amazing. Um, so we'll crack on. We, yeah, let's crack on with let's some cooking. If you um, could, on to next. Very kindly, just tidy this up. Tidy this up. Um, you need to get a small pan. I'm going to say a small pan, probably about half a litre of water on with one tablespoon of white wine vinegar, as instructed um, in, in, in the equipment. That up. Now, our next dish that we're going to do, we've got a, uh, two, two dishes to do and a, a yep. little assembly job with our cheesecake. So now we're going to go into the brassica salad. So, Charlie. Uh, yes. We've got that, got that water on, absolutely screaming, no smoke, thank God, which is amazing. A little splash of white vinegar in there. Quail eggs. Yes. Very scary looking quail eggs, and you guessed it, our in-house egg cracker, please welcome Charlie on stage. You get the job today, very unusual you way of opening enough, these. Yeah. We've got some brassicas, now you might have think, Chef, what's he about brassicas, he's got a bit of cabbage in his hand. Brassicas is a family, like the melons and squash, and the citruses, you know, the mandarin family, the flat bottom oranges, it's, it, it's um, there's families and groups, um, just like the game season and stuff like that. Well, cabbages, brassicas, uh, cauliflowers, tender stems, sprouts, and uh, just looking at some of these ingredients, this is a real, real kind of uh, proper Scandi, Scandi dish, if you can say, Nordic feel and very wild. We've got some blonde kale here, all grown in the UK. These are incredible. Yeah, and these are actually uh, kalettes, and you get a couple of kalettes. These are actually almost flowering purple sprouts. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, well, they look a bit like Brussels sprouts. Yeah, you open them up and you've got some absolutely incredible centers in there, and these are the absolute dream to work with. So, while our water's coming up, which is great, Charlie, yep. and if there's two of you at home, crack on if there's. Crack on. And if there's um, two of you, you can do the same, otherwise, while you're doing your eggs, which I'll show you. Yeah. Hit, hit the space button. Yeah, so I'm going to get you two bowls because I'm very kind. Yeah. And um, I'm going to show you a special way. You don't need to use a samurai sword like I'm using here. Um, if you've got a small little knife, that would be good. A little butter knife, a little uh, table knife, or a steak knife. This is what you want to do. Yeah. Did you see that? Okay. Yeah, yeah, I saw. Little, little crack over what's going to be the waste bowl. Okay. And just drag the knife halfway through. Like so. Okay. Yep. And then, like a normal egg opening situation, and then you need to Just pour. You need to out. pour it out. Yeah. Oh, we've it's given so you. Cute. We've given you a dozen, and the reason we give you a dozen is because you might burst one or two. You probably only need six, seven, eight. But okay. as you can see, there's a, 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 a not a sinew, almost like a film inside that protects the egg from breaking naturally. So you're trying to get through that with the knife, and then uh, pour it out. You start getting your fingers in, crushing it, taking a knife all the way through. You're going to okay. damage. Why don't you do one more? Yolk. So everyone at home can see. <laughs> No, nice. I can just, uh, I, I've, I've opened a few quail eggs. One more time. I I've bet you have. Probably about. Yeah. Got, personally, I don't know. With the with the teams I've worked with, so we could be, be approaching a million or drag. so. Yeah. Over this and then, one. Yeah, and then try and get your fingers kind of position, right in. and then pull and it apart. And use apart. use your elbows, not your fingers. Use your fingers. You're just going to crush into it. Use your elbows. Okay. A little quail dance. Little quail dance, as we do. So if you okay, want to carry on. Here we on go, that, here we go. That would be amazing. Our water won't take too long to come up. Did I put vinegar in there? You did. Did I? Good. You did, well done. It's a Negroni, it's strong. <laughs> so, so there we go, that's your wastage, that's your good. Don't worry, if you burst, oh, I broke one, don't worry about it. We only need about six, as I said. If one of the yolks splits, is that a problem? Not that it has. What, yeah. burst? Bursts, yeah. yeah. If it bursts, it's fine. fine. Uh, so that's why I said we've, we've, given, we've given a dozen. Yeah, a okay, couple. Okay. Just throw a few across the kitchen, just because you can. Um, so the kale as well, we just want to get the stem like this. We just want to go along until it naturally snaps, and, it snaps, and that's the edible bit. The stalks, a bit like asparagus. Have you ever prepped asparagus? Yes, I have, yeah. You just break it, and when the starch meets the sugar, the yeah, green yeah. and the purple, it just snaps. And it's a bit like that with this kale. So the stem bit away from you, pull it, pull it towards you, and just break off. And it, you're a bit like, well, there's a lot of wastage there. Some, some things there is. You want to see, you want to see a bit of artichoke prep, but there's delicious ingredients behind it all. I split one, but intentionally, so you can show everyone. What have you done? So the kalettes, we're going to cut into four. Now, I like my brassicas with a bit of bite. I don't know about you, but I... I well, Definitely, bit, I love bit, it like that. Bit of a show off here. I'm not a big sprout man, but I, not a big sprout man because once you go past the cooking of, of El Dente, they, that's when they become strong and pungent. Yeah, but they, you should never go that they, far, Ryan. No, I pop them in the water, they come out British racing green, just like this beautiful black cabbage here. That's not black, I don't know why they call it black cabbage, but it's a beautiful Cavalanero, as it's known in Italy, English black cabbage, as the name goes. And I like it just in. Uh, you know, a minute or so, yep. just to refresh it and, and have a little bit of bite with it. You see these beautiful little kalettes, or purple flowering sprouts, we're going to cut those into quarters. So beautiful there. And um, 
The reason we do that is just so they cook quite fast and they just look really delicious. This is a real, real Nordic looking dish. If you get a big stem on it like that, just chop it off. The big stems will take a long way, a long time to cook. And don't worry if some leaves break off. We like leaves. You just see this again. Now I'm going from the base away from me. Just the fingers, just kind of loose around the stem. And just pulling off and it'll just um, it'll just keep the leaf and you'll get rid of the stem so they're the bits you don't want to eat. So I'm going to pop those aside. Now this dish again is a, a, an ambient dish uh, with a real hot sauce on it at the end. So we're actually going to get, I wonder if you could get me a little bowl of any, any type. That would be amazing. And what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to cook our eggs and we're going to cook our brassicas in the same water afterwards and we're going to get rid of the water and use a pan to heat the sauce up which is a Jerusalem artichoke. How much ice? Um, how much ice? That'll be enough. That'll be loads. And could you just use cold water for this at home or? Yeah, yeah you could. What we're going to do is we're going to actually use a bit of the cooking water afterwards. We're going to yeah. poach the eggs, pop them in here to just stop the cooking so they're okay. nice and soft. I want you to do this for two reasons. If you mess it up I can blame you <laughs> and if you do it then I'm showing you how easy it actually is. Okay. So this is, I'm going to in kind of like ghost the way of how we're going to do it. So this water's poaching as we talked about, um, uh, you know, poaching we talked about earlier with the venison meatballs. You just see the bubbles just, just, just starting to rise. And then they start rising further in like a moon shape until it comes up to a boil. So I'm going to turn that right down. So that's where you to, want to it. number one. That's, that's, that's true poached egg place. Now we spin it around and that's yeah. because we want the protein to go in and a natural current, kind of a gravity to kind of wrap the proteins on and give you a poached egg. Some will come out wonky, you just can't get around that, but hopefully the, the majority of them will be perfect. Okay. You poached egg before, you a bit of a bit yeah, yeah, yeah. Egg, egg yeah, benedict yeah, and a yeah. bit of a king it's not, I'm, I'm, you know, I boil and fry more than I poach, I just, the whole sort of, it never really works out for me. Okay. You know. You want a nice big fast um, like that and then you want to drift them in and let them go with the current. So not against. So you're going to release yeah. the bowl like that and you're going to let them just plonk in, however they plonk in, with the current. Gosh, yeah? it's huge pressure. So I hope you've been listening at home, guys. I taught my sister-in-law, she's like, can you just teach me how to do poached eggs? I always mess them up. She absolutely smashes poached eggs out better than me now. Honestly, show off. Like okay, we ready? Before. Yeah, yeah. Go on. yeah, yeah. And then just pop. Yeah, more, more, more force with the... More speed. Ready, go. Faster, 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 faster. I like controlling you a little bit. Sorry, nice. <laughs> go on, that's enough, that's enough. Okay, and then I just, I just pour them in. Yeah, try and take the bowl as close to the water as possible. All in one motion. Oh, 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 oh. Perfect. Love it. Wow. Really, absolutely amazing. Yeah, and now they go around, as you can see, the protein kind of wrapping them around. You're always going to lose from the freshness of the egg or just because of the diet, the quail eggs, wherever they're from. A little bit of protein, that's fine, we'll just pick it off later. But the majority you want it to wrap around that precious little egg yolk yes. and just protect it and give you a perfect little quail egg. Everyone's gonna be off to Sainsbury's and Waitrose later, obviously buying more. Amazing. Thank you, Chef, I enjoyed that. Yeah, so we wanna keep that, um, they're, they're gonna take about 30 seconds. Okay. And then you're gonna pull them out, pop them in there, and we're gonna pop the cabbage in the same water. Genius. And, and it's as simple as that. So, poached eggs. We said 30 seconds, Charlie. I don't want to take your glory. Take your eggs out of there and just pop them in okay. there. With, and then afterwards we'll just pour, we'll pour out. I tell you what, I'll get you a little ladle of water. Okay. Yeah, 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 in, yeah. Perfect. So much of cooking also is, is just sort of doing things with confidence, isn't it? Confidence, movement yep. and... Yep. Now these, these are the money. You see some that have grouped together. But we want, we want those yolks, we want them runny, and this, uh, the ice just stops it. It looks really chef-y, really master chef -y, what you see on TV and stuff. Great, that's what we want. We're trying to give you guys new skills, new confidence, and um, thank you so much. Ever so kind. Okay. So, perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to pop that water back on. I'm going to need that water. Oh, sorry. sorry, I'll bring it back to you. Yeah, and we're also going to pop on a... Uh, pan for the next dish. So a nice saute pan, your number two in your instructions, onto a very high heat and we are, we're going to get smoky again. Oh, okay. We're just a little bit smoky, not too smoky, not unexpected smoky. <laughs> I tell you what, um, with your pan as well, just screw, with the nice kind of slotted spoon, which you, you should all have if you've got another spoon, or just pass the water through um, a chinois, we'll just get rid of some or of those. Or a sieve or something like that? Yeah, or a sieve or something like that, it's, it's fine. It's all going to go in the same dish and, and be covered in sauce. So it's, it's kind of like the roast dinner. You can do a one pot if you want. Yep. So now just kind of gentle not to break the eggs. You can already see, just get those in water a little bit and we'll just set those aside, Charlie. Okay. Absolutely perfect. And then all of the kales back into the water and let that just slowly cook. They're probably going to take in that quail water 
Uh, we don't need to season it because the sauce that we're going to uh, use afterwards is is absolutely. Um, so how long will they be in the water there for? Yeah, pro probably about two, two, three minutes. Yeah. In the meantime, um, I'm going to get a little pan and heat the sauce up. Just endless amount of pans. It's, 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 it's a definitely a sort of panny destination, isn't it? It is, and you, you you've got to respect a little bit what all these restaurants are going through. Um, you know, to produce some of these beautiful, simple meals. It's the techniques behind them. Uh, today, no frying, no ovens, but all that gets a little bit congested on the hob, but it's fine. At the end of it, you're gonna see some beautiful, beautiful food. Could I give you that? Yes. Amazing. So, in here, we've got our quail eggs. We have got our beautiful brassicas, um, just sitting in the poaching liquor, and then we've got this beautiful sauce. So this just needs to heat very, very gently. When it's quite hot, this is Jerusalem artichokes. Jerusalem artichokes are small little tubers, uh, like the potatoes we had a couple of weeks ago, the little pink fur looking things. Yeah. They taste woody. They're, sorry, that was in the last show, last destination yeah. Marrakesh. Um, they're beautiful, they're smoky, they're creamy, they're buttery, they're velvety, and they're perfect for this dish. Yes. So we are just going to pop that on the stove. I'm just gonna get that nice and hot. Pop that there. Now, shall we talk about the next dish? Yeah, the final dish. And, uh, and then we'll bring everything Scorch together. Scorched of the wood. Okay. Look at this, Charlie. That's this guy, isn't it? Have a little, have a little, uh, have, a have, a, have a little look at him. So this is hen of the wood. It is. Which this, is a mushroom. This is a mushroom. So you get chicken in the wood, which grows all around the UK. This is mm. called maitake. It's a Japanese mushroom originally, and it's uh, cultivated. It's quite hard to find in the wild. So it's cultivated, meaning it's it's kind of like seeded and bloomed mm. indoors, a little bit like indoor vegetables and stuff. It's woody. It's umami. It's delicious, and it really loves to kick up the backside when it comes to toasting and grilling. It loves it. There's so much sugar in there. It's so unusual. We literally just want to break that maitake up. Be very gentle. It falls to pieces quite easily, and we're just going to sit it. Uh, in the pan, like so. Yep. We just want to toast it. You can eat this raw. I Does it take me back to Basque Country where you just... We're not doing anything to it, we're just going to leave it. at all, just let it go. Step back, Charlie, let it do its thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is a very, very unusual dish, and it's very, very unusual because we've got a mushroom with a beautiful citrus that we're going to acidulate it with. Um, just kind of like cut through the umami. Lentils need a splash of vinegar. Mushrooms need a splash of sherry vinegar or citrus just to lift them, as does fish. You know, your fish and chips with vinegar, it's the same thing. Mm. Anything that's a bit flat in flavor needs lifting. This is very unusual. That's can very I try a bit of this? <laughs> I want, okay, if we can just focus on Charlie's is face this, for a minute. I want you guys at home to try this also. Whoa. <laughs> uh, just, just, just don't say anything. Soy. Caramel, cheese, sour, salty, weird, fermented, unusual, let's eat it. All those words, are they all there? He said it all. Bang. Oh, whoa. It is the it's most unusual very thing. very Moorish. I kind of want to get back in there. And this fermented uh, cheese is called uh, gyost or prim in Sweden or bronze. And what it is, it's the way of the milk that they take. Don't worry, Charlie. So I've control. always got an eye on the pans. Um, it's, in, it's in Norway, it's in Sweden. You get it in little, um, these little awful... Um, uh, toothpaste tubes. Okay. In Sweden it's called Prim and a chef uh, called Ben Spalding introduced me to it years ago and I've been obsessed with it ever since. It's the way they take all the whey when they extract whey out of other milks, almost like skimming it when they make the cheese process and then they um, they add a little bit of soy sometimes and uh, quite a bit of sugar, condensed milk and they make a cheese, they go through the cheese process and it makes the most unusual, uh, it's called caramel cheese mm. or bronze or gost or sweet cheese, whatever you want and it's beautiful. Well that's it, there's sort of a hint of Dime bar, there too. Ah, spatula. Spatula, a uh, pallet knife, whatever you want to call it, and you can smell those just toasting up, burning as some people like to call it. <laughs> We're just going to turn those off. All meant to happen, obviously. Just leave them. We want that burning um, flavour. It's a real big part, and like I said, really unusual cooking today. And what we want to do is get some of this beautiful condiment, the, the fermented cheese, and just want to swipe it like this. Some more. Just cause a nice little kind of bed for it to sit on. You do this with a butter knife, you could do it with a spoon exactly mm -hmm. as I've just done. Scoop it out in the middle, work it side, work it side, work it side, or left to right, left to right, and a nice little bed for this mushroom on. This dish couldn't be simpler. Charlie's like, Whoosh, just enough time. That's perfect Charlie, do not worry. Little splash of the citrus. Really unusual uh, ingredients. I mean, look at that, absolutely stunning. And there we go. So we're going to get a little bit of 
just over the mushrooms, acidulating the mushrooms, this is called. So it's burnt on one side, raw on the other, all the textures you want, unusual umami ingredient, mm. acidulate it with a sweet acidic citrus on a salty caramelly whatever cheese. I mean, come on. I'm sort of a little I, bit I made, speechless because I made, um, I made promises. Uh, I'm just extreme. I've never seen anything like it. I'm kind of curious to how this is all going to come together. I made promises that it was going to get a little bit, a bit fruity and a bit wild, wild Nordic. We are there, people. Just want to kind of dance this around here. Let's go. Let's go back to front on each piece. Those people now, isn't it? An Uber Eats like that. Yep. Yeah, okay, no. <laughs> Wait, guys, it's gonna be delicious. There you go. Simple as that, right. another little bit of citrus on there. Really, really unusual, no salt. It's, uh, you've got the, in the fermented cheese, there's a big salt presence in there. There you go, dish, I'm dish number two. really excited by trying that. Okay, so I think as well, we're ready to start plating up, Charlie. Yeah, how are your brassicas looking? Brassicas are good, so let's yeah. go with the brassicas and the quail eggs, and let's start moving along and just start plating all these lovely dishes, ending with the beautiful dessert. The dessert takes minutes. Okay, okay so I do would, you. would you very kindly just drain those onto a clean cloth? Yep. So we're not putting water on the plate. My beautiful puree. Slotted spoon. And we've got my brassicas here. I'm gonna pop the brassicas at the side there as well. And it is, it's unusual cooking, like, like uh, Johan said before, you know, it's all about the shoots, it's about harvesting, you know, amazing cabbages, it's got a big pre presence. And um, that's what we're trying to do with a cook's tour, as I constantly reference, is take you around the world, show you these cultures, show you the different ways of eating, different ways of plating, the different uh, ingredients celebrated in many different ways. I think we're going to go on oh, here. I lost one, but that's okay, isn't it? So that's going to be, for the dessert, that's going to be, yeah, that's perfect. Nice soft eggs is what we're looking for, Charlie. Jolly good. Well, that's what you've got, Chef. So a nice warm puree here. Oh, relaxed. Oh, Very relaxed plating. So, yeah. That's Who do you think you doing. are, Jackson Pollock? And that's what we do on the carpet as well, if you can. <laughs> really, really loose on, on the plating. That's and, cool. and, and as well, Rene Redepi, big fan of this, just letting it fall on the plate. Massimo Batoris, one of the great chefs in the world. Yeah, yeah. They're just letting the ingredients speak. It's throwing it on the plate, literally. Everyone's on Uber Eats now, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, let's get a little uh, teaspoon, and get real delicate with this. We'll just get some of these cabbages, strain them off a little bit. Just kind of like drape them around. Absolutely beautiful. I love cabbages. And this puree is so, so simple. Layer oh, some of those in. That's some real fun plating this. Yeah, there's so many strange little, I mean, these are little, just beautiful little uh, jewels, these quail eggs. Just break a little bit of protein off. Just plate them almost going across the plate. Yeah. Wherever, you just want to get different mouthfuls, different flavors. It's unusual. Is this one, I mean, when, when, when you cook, is this kind of, I don't know, this, to me this would be like the, 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 the best bit, the pleating bit, when you see everything come together. Is, is, it, is, is that the case for you? Definitely. Yeah? Um, yeah, just seeing it all come together. And uh, do you visualise this beforehand or, or are you actually making it up as you go along? Um, uh, do you about? know what? Even if I do one, I yeah. end up doing the other. Sometimes we just freestyle it. This, this, this is how I wanted it, this is how I wanted it, this is how I wanted it, but who knows with the dessert. We, oh, might, we might yeah. go there. So again, this, you've kind of got two starters here, um, just celebrating the, the you know, different, different kind of spect uh, spectrums of what we're doing. I just want to get some, some, uh, some dill here. Mm -hmm. And again, you've got dill on the starter, but these are both starters. Just want to kind of sing a little bit of this over. Dill's used, there's a Michelin star place um, called Aquavit in Haymarket, yes, and the Piccadilly Covent Market. And uh, everything's got dill on, dill oil, dill ice, dill this. It's, it's kind of like a coriander to the Mexicans or Thai mm. cuisine, you know. And uh, don't be afraid of uh, um, using it. A little bit of uh, olive oil, just to finish. And for me, without blowing my own trumpet, which I'm very good at, that is very much something that you would see in a Scandinavian Noma S cookbook. Onto the last two dishes. I, I think it looks great. I think it's the most alternative dish that we've seen on a cook's tour. That you reckon? Far. Yeah, I do. I do. Um, you know, I think this is really um, exciting. It is very unusual. Yeah. Okay, so uh, if I could very kindly have the cheesecake base yes. out of the fridge, and voila, true blue there pizza is, style. There. Again, just be quite unusual with this base. Don't worry if it's not fully set. It's kind of like a, a beautiful thing not to be. And then the sweet cheese. This is my favorite dish i'm going to put it out there and again get a little teaspoon guys kind of just plunk a little bit on there 
get a little bit of height and just be really, really simple with it. Really simple. You're going to make two of these. Shall I make two? Do you want to make one? Yeah. You're going to make, are you ready? Yeah, come on, come on, come you on. Ready? Yeah. You want it, don't you? Okay. Can I use this bit here? You can. I'm going to pop that on the plate there. So this is my dime bar cheesecake. I'll tell you what, let's bring it off. Let's garnish it here. Then we'll go on. So just plonk it on. And then plonk another one on top. Doesn't matter the shape. If you've got a long bit, on top? is it thick? Got double decker? Yeah, I'd try to put two on there. And then we're going to get some nice wild flowers. We're going to get the rest of that dime. Like that? More? Uh, yeah, maybe maybe one more. Go high, get confident. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah oh, yeah. show your confidence. And then boom. We'll, boom. Extra bushels, as I like to say in the kitchen. And then there we go. Some nice, nice flowers. Now, guys, we uh, those of you that joined us last last summer for Mexico, not what you think it is. Not what, <laughs> not what you think it is. No, How, no, however, no. have a little, have a little uh, marigold. You get French mm. marigold, Mexican marigold. This is. Um, French marigold, it's so unusual. Oli de Boo, we've had a, a very lucky uh, time to work with some great chefs last year on a few projects at Rocket. And Oli de Boo from uh, Hyde, you know, he's a, a, a one, two star Michelin chef. Do you want to get some of these flowers and just decorate? Yeah. These wildflowers, they all taste really delicious. And the French marigolds are an absolute game changer. So just have a bit of a play. Yeah. And you're like, flowers on a dessert, this guy has lost it. But um, they, they've all got. They've all got relevance, extra deliciousness, and then a little bit of... Um, Where's the popcorn featuring? Popcorn's coming now. These are cool, man. Yeah, really cool. So the popcorn as well, it's, don't worry if we left it in the pan, it's a bit toasted. A few little pieces on here. I just kind of Chef, I dare to say there's a few burnt popcorn in there. No, there isn't, Charlie. Don't do that. So <laughs> Everyone can see it on the overhead cam. Let's, let's get there's the no bits that are not burnt. Okay, pick out the non-burnt yeah. bits. And then just, just, just pop them around, kind of stick them on the sides, get really artistic with it. Oh, this, wow. guys, this my is what I want to see this. on the socials. I really want to see because we've got some real, real clever platers out there, some really refined chefs that are putting together some of this food nice and what, what I do, dare I say it. So I want to see this. Charlie, there you go. Beautiful little elegant dessert. It's all coming together. Pop that there. Oh, the dimes. We didn't put the dimes on. <laughs> <laughs> the classic part, we've got dimes in the base. And dimes and on Would top. you like to just get with um, a little spoon? Have you got a spoon over there? Yep. Just um, get Careful. a spoon and just kind of dance them over the top and that's done. And then we will move on to our beautiful meatballs. Almost there, Charlie, our favorite bit, eating. Yeah. Seems like a while ago that Arthur was here, but he'll need to come back and do a little bit of sampling. 100%. That's perfect. How's just that? gonna add a nice little bite in there. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. Let's pop that over there in our final dish, the meatballs that we cracked on with earlier. A mashed potato. Now the mashed potato, guys, is smoked mashed potato. Really, really smoked. We've smoked the butter, just in case you're wondering how to do it. Um, you can actually buy it. I've seen some smoked butter actually, weirdly, and then I went back to get it in Sainsbury's of all places. Um, so around, I went back to get it again a few weeks later and they didn't have it, and they said that they were just trialing it. So dare I say you can find it around, but if not, so you just sort of massage just massage it. it around. Yeah, it slightly split out the fat a little bit. Yeah, but um, that's okay. Could you, could you open that? I've got oh, come on. come on. You're a man or a mouse. <laughs> I think I'm a mouse today. We might need to get, um, yeah, nice. No. Oh, spoke too <laughs> soon, did we, mister? And then comes in and saves the day after all your hard work. Oh, come on. Okay, so just want to get some of this beautiful, beautiful mash. I'm just going to get some nice height on that. And the height's going to... Oh. It happened. Okay, so here we go. I'm really ripping up the studio this evening. Yeah, do you know what? I'm, we're going to have a letter I'm of feeling warning. aggressive. I feel like January's, you know, we're almost done now with January. <laughs> and it's, it's time to get rugged again, rigid and ready for this big year ahead. Okay, so on with the meatballs. Again, just a few on the side there. And then we're just going to pop all these. Do you want to grab the lingonberry jam for me? Yes. Absolutely amazing. Just stack all these up. It's nice to get a little bit of height. I think when you're, when you're presenting food, half of it's how it looked, right? Well, we've always said you eat with your eyes. You do, indeed. And then I'm going to leave the rest because this would Those be look two, knock out. two portions all over the meatballs. The sauce yeah. is everything. And then... You wouldn't find that at Ikea, would you? I'm not going to say anything, Charlie. That looks so good. 
No, the answer is you certainly wouldn't. And then again, some of that beautiful dill oil from before. Just, just split that sauce up a little bit. It's going to add a huge evidence. Would you just be so kind to pop a little bit of dill on here as well? You're probably like, this guy loves dill. It plays a part in all these dishes. It's not being thrown on. You know, the, the nice dill, the, the acidity of the lingonberry marmalade. This sort of thing? There you go, lingonberry marmalade. And there we have it. Chef. It's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, it's looking really good. There we go. So let's move, um, let's move the board out of the way, maybe. Move the board out of the way. We can get back here. I've made a bit of a mess today, haven't I? Hey, let's just say you've been having fun. I've been having loads of fun. So, a little recap. Let's bring all this in here. Some beautiful, beautiful food. It's definitely ceviche now, isn't it? Yes. 100%. And there we go. Let's get a beautiful little cocktail in there. From Oops, our sorry, amazing just a bit of rearranging so it's all on the overhead cam. And I'll give you a little brief while you're doing Go that. On. Little run through. Amazing to start with your two starters. You have an amazing chalk stream trout, pickled blueberries, dill, horseradish, and sour cream starter with some brassicas, drew some artichoke, amazing dill garnish, and those incredible little quail eggs in there just waiting to explode with the saltiness of the sauce. We have the unusual maitake or hen of the wood mushrooms with a sweet Scandinavian cheese. The unusual one in the middle finished <laughs> by the, the um, main course which is traditional but with a twist, venison meatballs, smoked potatoes, lingonberry jam, dill oil and then finish with the one and only dime cheesecake and the incredible Nordic Negroni. Wow. I can Congratulations. breathe. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. What a, I mean, incredible marathon of cooking. I mean, there's a lot of incredible food technique and ingredients that's been used. And um, well, well done. And um, Arthur, come on, quickly come Go back on, in. Okay. Um, have a very quick um, taste. Let me um, shimmy over here. Here we go. There we go. Have a quick try of. Um, well, what are you going to go for? You. I'm going to spill it all. <laughs> can, can we bring, can bring it in? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. lean in, lean in. What do you like? Go on, okay, go on. Okay. Gotta, gotta, go gotta, go gotta, gotta go for the trout. Gotta get in there. Gotta go for the trout. Get a little bit of blueberries been, on been, every mouthful I've as well. I've been waiting for this. Bit of, bit of trout eyeball. That's what we want. Trout <laughs> eyeball. <laughs> you gotta mm. say if it's not good as well. <laughs> do you know what the best bit is? Where, where that really hot smoky pan is crisped up, and you get that sort of. Actually, nice. the, that nice little bit of burnt texture, which is fantastic. Oh. But I love it. I, lo I really love the raw trout like this because it just shows you don't need to do anything no, with it very keep much. It simple. Yeah. yeah, and it's just delicious. Clean, goes really well with the blueberries. Fantastic. Brilliant. That is wonderful. Oh, Thank you. Not at all, not at all. Well, um, we will let Arthur continue eating um, in a moment or two, and I'm sure um, Johan will come oh, back and yeah. join us as well. Um, but I'm afraid we have run a bit over time today, so uh, apologies for that, but I hope it's been well worth it because Ryan has created some exceptional food and uh, a wonderful cocktail from Johan to go with it. Um, please post your photographs, cook with Rocket, and use our social handles, Instagram, Facebook. Um, we love to see what you do. We return in two weeks we're gonna be getting a bit romantic we are it's gonna be there's gonna <laughs> be are. some sparks in the air and um, dare I say it there's gonna be some sexy ingredients oh Ryan, I let us wait. down follow our social and check out our website because there's lots of cool things going on all about the romance of Venice which is going to be on the 11th of February um, please tell your friends and family about that um, more the merrier. Everyone is welcome. Um, thank you to everyone at home. Um, it's been a great pleasure and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank Goodbye you. from me. Goodbye. Goodbye.